everyone, and welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan. I'm JJ Walsh, your host here in Hiroshima, and today I have the pleasure of talking with Suga Lennon, Christina Minami. Thank you so much for joining. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming it's, on our show. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you here. So yesterday, Christina and I were on a Tokyo City and Nature webinar, which was really fun. Um, but once I started looking at your Instagram, Christina, there is so many wonderful off the beaten tracks, slow travel, sustainable travel uh, stories that you've done all around Japan. Have you been to all 47 prefectures yet? Well, I actually have like a three prefectures left. There would be like Saga, Oita and Shimane. <laughs> and I'm still like waiting uh, for some projects. I don't know, like, or I really want to go there like this year. Like, I hope I can do this so I can like conquer all 47 prefectures. I think I think you'll get there. And no matter where you go uh, on, we're going to go through lots of your photos, talk about lots of your travel stories today. And it seems like no matter where you go, you just really appreciate the little things, which I really love about traveling myself too. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. Like, I think like, uh, you know, the beauty is in every, at, like everywhere. So you don't need to go like to the main attraction to find something beautiful. You just need to go out there like and see what's going on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, to tell people a little bit of your backstory, I was looking at the questions that people ask you on Instagram. And one of them is, how did you come to Japan, of course? And you first came over as a student. Is that right? Yes. Um, I came like as a student in 2016. Um, like, uh, speaking Japanese was my dream from the childhood, I guess. Um, so uh, I came to Japan in 2016 and I went to Japanese school, which is like Japanese language school in Osaka. Um, and <laughs> so my first Japanese was like Osaka Ben Japanese. <laughs> um, and I stayed there like for two years or so. Uh, and it was like really fun time. Uh, but well, I'll almost uh, spend like all the time just working and um, doing some part-time job well, which was like really a uh, busy period of my life but it was fun yeah yeah nice and then uh, you talk about one of the reasons you were interested in Japan there was an actor that you fell in love with Haruma Miura is that right yes uh, Haruma Miura was my <laughs> <laughs> um, my <laughs> star, <laughs> but I really loved him. Um, so I like first watched the film with him when I was like 14 or 15. So when I fell in love, like, well, um, uh, with his talent, because he was like really, really talented. So, and uh, it was my dream to meet him one day, uh, which I did. <laughs> That's amazing. How did you have the chance to meet him? Um, so there is a TV show that is called uh, Yuvan Nishi Nippon. So what are you doing in Japan? Uh, and uh, I met this um, TV crew uh, at the airport. It was uh, in 2014, I think. It was like uh, my first time ever coming to Japan. Uh, and I met them and they asked like, what are you doing in Japan? I said like, well, I'm just, you know, a traveler, but I would love to meet him. So I said like, oh, I would love to meet like Miura Hanama. And they said like, hmm, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so in the six years, um, almost, I think six years or five years. So uh, they filmed uh, five different episodes of me, uh, like working in my home country, uh, trying to learn Japanese. Uh, and uh, after I came to Japan and I got my first, uh, uh, job in Tokyo they also like came to my um, working place and uh, they said like they had um, a secret like um, some kind of like a surprise for me so we went to one of the um, restaurants at the Roppongi and I was thinking like they're probably gonna show me some I don't know like poster signed by him or some some souvenir with him and they said like open your eyes and then like when I open eyes there was nothing in front of me but when I uh, turn my head to the left. There would be like, him just sitting there, like um, looking at me, and just, like he waved, like hello, like how are you doing, and stuff like that. So uh, it was crazy. <laughs> wow! 
Wow, that's amazing. What a what a really nice surprise and uh, totally unexpected. How fun. Yeah, the true. <laughs> but um, but it was it was his philosophy or uh, it was kind of an epiphany for you when he died. Unfortunately, he died really young. Yeah. And it, it kind of inspired you that you need to have better work-life balance. And one of the ways to do that is through travel. Is that right? Yeah, unfortunately, he died in 2019. Um, and, uh, uh, well, it was, like, really sad for me. I was uh, in such a great, like, shock. And uh, uh, But uh, one thing that I learned from that experience is that, like, the life is too short, so you have to do what, what you want to do. And uh, I've always uh, was, I don't know... Um, eager to experience like the Japan, but a different side of Japan, the non-touristic Japan. And uh, uh, so I started my blog on Instagram uh, like several years ago. And uh, now I'm here like showing all these places uh, to all of you guys. So it's like really incredible. Um, I really appreciate all your support. So I'm happy now. <laughs> That's great. Well, you, you do have a lot of great support. Um, and you have one of the things that I wanted to ask you as well is uh, one of the common questions people ask you is like how to take great photos, uh, how to visit Japan. Uh, so let's start with some of those questions and see if you can add to some of the questions. Sure. I would love to hear your, your additional information too. Mm -hmm. uh, so people asking as a first time traveler to Japan, uh, what would you suggest landing in Tokyo? And you say, of course, depends on the season, uh, but you would skip Tokyo, Fujisan, Osaka, Kyoto and because of over-tourism. And over avoiding over-tourism is something you often talk about, uh, which is, I think, so important as the, the inbound tourism gets busier and busier. And you say, instead, try Tokyo, Nagano, Toyama, Kanazawa, Osaka, Deep Nara, and uh, of course it's up to you. But I, I love to find other people in, working in tourism and travel in Japan who are really suggesting these off the beaten track places. Uh, would you stick with that answer? Um, I would probably change it a bit, but it really like depends on the season. Uh, and um, I don't want to say that like uh, like Fujisan, like or going to Osaka or Kyoto is bad a thing, but uh, just maybe you can change something. You know, that there's like a lot of places near Kyoto where you can uh, go, uh, like Uji, like the play, uh, the you know the famous place uh, for the tea farms, uh, or like in Tokyo, you can see like a different side of Tokyo, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, that there's like Hinohara village, that there's like Akiruna city and something like, uh, you know, out uh, of the main um, spots like Shibuya or Shinjuku. But yeah, uh, I would definitely advise you to try uh, the golden route, for example, like so different route and uh, going through um, like Nagana, Tayama and the Kanazawa would be like a really nice experience because for example, the Kanazawa actually looks uh, a lot like Kyoto. Uh, they have like this uh, uh, matcha like uh, this Japanese style uh, tea houses where you can find like geisha performing. Um, yeah, I was just there recently. They oh. have really nice preserved old towns, right? Where all the classic houses are together and you can wander around. And yeah. most of them are still in use, like businesses are using them, people are living in them. Um, so that was a really nice surprise. The first time I was in Kanazawa just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's a really beautiful city with a lot to see. So I would definitely recommend people to stay there like for two days at least and then catch a train uh, from Kanazawa to Osaka. It's really easy to go from Kanazawa to Osaka. Uh, it's not like Shinkansen. It's uh, like um, a rapid train which would be not that expensive as Shinkansen. And you can, you know, uh, enjoy like bento or like um, some like lunch uh, on the train and just read some books so it won't take um that long just a couple of hours yeah and i think um your your ideas about avoiding over tourism are so good um but even if you want to go somewhere that has uh like a real top spot and so popular you can still avoid tourists you can still avoid the crowds by going much much earlier or later in the day or uh, off season which i i see you doing a lot as well is that right 
<laughs> yeah, like I recently stayed uh, near Asakusa, uh, so uh, I had um, um, a shooting for work at one of the hotels, and I was thinking like, hey, like uh, I like honestly i don't like asakusa it's like somewhere like everyone is going there so it's like really overcrowded and uh so i never go there so like but this time i was thinking like i'm staying there for a night so um, maybe i can wake up like really early to see what's going on uh around and so i, I woke up about like 5 a.m and i went through streets of like asakusa and it was really beautiful uh and i really enjoyed it and there's like almost no one there yeah. uh, you know just it's magic of- isn't it it's like um yeah. the benefits of going to famous miyajima island but if you stay on the island yeah. before the crowds come or after the crowds leave you have the island magic to yourself right so it it is possible yeah (laughs) Uh, another uh comment so which is your favorite japanese prefecture i love your answer it's very politically uh, correct um all of them i can't decide is that true you really you can't decide on a favorite one yeah i really can't decide but if we like um i was actually talking about it with my friend uh, and I was thinking maybe like Nara Prefecture would something would be uh, one of my favorite ones because um, no one's talking about Nara Prefecture like everyone's going there to see like deer right there's like a famous park Nara Park where you can go and see like uh, deer like wandering around and uh, but Nara is uh, such a beautiful uh great prefecture with a lot of culture and there are so many places that you can go there and feel like the ancient japan yeah there's like a persimmon harvesting which is like really rare thing you can stay in beautiful houses uh you can experience like this old japan that is not touristic but something really special so uh if you have time i would definitely advise you to go to nara to explore uh like uh, the deep deep nara (laughs) not only nara park Uh, Just fantastic. And I just want to point out here, uh, if you're listening, not looking, this is a beautiful old house, uh, which has been renovated into a hotel. You've got these gorgeous original beams across the top and just a a fabulous place to stay. That's in deep Nara, as you say, right, Christina? Yes. (laughs) The deep Nara, yes. We we had a comment from Deb. Uh, Thanks for joining from YouTube. She says, hi, Dre and Christina, building my Japan itinerary with your help. Thanks so much for joining. Fabulous. Um, yeah, Nara, another thing you did, which I thought was was great, I love to see fruit picking in Japan. It's is such a wonderful thing to do seasonal, yeah. um, many different areas, right? Yes. But you also did this really unique uh, kudzu sweets making. Now, yeah. kudzu, I don't know if you know this, Christina, but kudzu is like an invasive species. And there's only some parts of Japan where they eat it. And so if we could change, bring that culture of eating something that nobody wants, that's mm-hmm. fabulous. I love that idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, kuzu is a really, like, rare thing. I don't think that you hear about it, like, every day. And, like, this is, like, honkuzu. So, and honkuzu is made only in Nara Prefecture in uh, Yoshino Mountain, which is, like, really accessible from Osaka as well. It's just, like, a couple of hours. And you can also uh, buy tickets on the symphony train, which is, like, really... Uh, beautiful blue train going from Osaka to Yoshino mountain, which is like, would, can be a one day trip or you can stay there for nine, for a night and uh, enjoy like the sunset and sunrise, which is probably would be really beautiful. Yeah. Sounds amazing. And uh, you were, la- some of your photos as well, uh, showing other animals, not, not only deer in Nara, um, but I love this uh, picture here. And, and you say, I won't lie. I say that Nara is my favorite prefecture. See, you did, you <laughs> did say it. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the few prefectures where you can feel the untouched beauty of Japanese nature. So that's lovely. And very easy to get to, right? Because it's on the Shinkansen line. Yes, yes. Uh, it, well, it really depends on the place because, as I said, like, Nara Prefecture is really 
huge, you know, prefecture, uh, like uh, size wise. Uh, but yeah, there's like a lot of buses and local trains. Uh, so it wasn't like really hard to travel around. And if you search a bit, or you can always like message me and I can help you with like itinerary. <laughs> nice. And you, you said you don't drive, right? So a lot of the rural areas you go to, they have to have a train or a bus or some way to get there by public transport, right? Yeah, unfortunately, like I don't have a driving license and I've never, <laughs> I never tried like driving or anything. So I usually use just buses and trains, which is really um, comfortable because like Japan has a really uh, good system of uh, trains and buses. There's like a schedules and they actually stick to the schedule, which is like really important for like tourists. Uh, so even if you don't speak like uh, Japanese, you can always check the site. You can use uh, Google. Google translate, uh, translator or, you know, it's like really easy to, to translate the whole site into English to see um, the schedule. So, yeah, I usually use buses <laughs> and trains. Yeah. Um, now, that's another point you raised just there about uh, using Google Translate, that often if you are going outside the cities, it is a little bit more difficult to communicate it might be more difficult to book a hotel in a ryokan. Um, but I think recently, even booking.com or the, the booking agencies, you can book uh, smaller stays, the Japanese style inns. They are also easier to book. Um, so you just maybe need to order your food or do a little bit uh, of Japanese. But to me, that's the fun part of traveling, right? Is yeah. that to speak the language. Yeah, um, I really enjoy like um, talking to the locals. And uh, when I first time, uh, when I first came to Japan in 2014, like I couldn't speak uh, at all. So I was using just like the body language or like some Google <laughs> translator. Uh, it was fun, and a lot of people like understood what I was talking about. So uh, they laughed and they smiled, and it was like just a really nice experience. So they tried to help me, um, and I was like really. Um, thankful for that so just don't be afraid to go there and uh, use your like body language or you have an internet there you can buy like a sim card so it's so easy these days yeah that's true it is a lot easier uh when i first came to japan it was only a paper book there was no smartphones so a uh, long time ago <laughs> But, you know, a lot of travelers, because I've been doing tours recently as well, and a lot of travelers are just blown away by how helpful and kind people are. Yeah. So even if they can't speak English, they do somehow communicate and then they somehow help them. And I think that's especially true in less busy areas. You have so many people really willing to take time and help, right? Yeah, so that's true. Like, they're really interested in talking to foreigners as well. They say, like, oh, like, I don't speak English. I'm really sorry for that. But I, I will try, like, my best to help you, which is, like, really nice. Nice of them. That's so great. Uh, another question you had is, uh, how do you take such good photos? <laughs> I, think, I think for anyone, like, you're, you're almost at 200,000 followers on Instagram. So you are a real Instagram influencer. Um, and one of the reasons I think for your success is all your fabulous reels that you do. You have great engagement uh, with your people making comments. Uh, you often highlight their comments and, uh, you know, say thank you. I think all of that is really important uh, to build your following. But also, yes, good photos. Now, is it true you only use your smartphone? Um, yeah, like I really uh, enjoy traveling on just with my backpack. So uh, um, I do have a camera and I enjoy taking pictures. Uh, and I actually um, launching a site right now uh, where I just, you know, put all my articles and I use like uh, real photos taken from my um, camera um, to support like the platform. But for everyday life, I had, yeah, I just use my phone. It's so easy and it's so light, you know, and I'm just playing with uh, an angle or the light, you know, the weather. Um, and I really enjoy the moment, you know, um, just the shooting, you know, <laughs> whatever I see, just shoot. <laughs> And, and you had really good advice about uh, just practicing yeah. and, and keep practicing. Maybe look at the style that you like to mm -hmm. see on Instagram and then you try to replicate that style. Is that right? 
Um, I don't usually uh, get inspired by some like uh, Instagram like reels or whatever. I just love shooting like every day like when I wake up I don't know I see the light and I'm just shooting at my house so it doesn't matter what you shoot it just uh, you have to practice it every day when I'm looking at my uh, photos or at my uh, videos that I took like a year ago I, I can see the difference um, so I think if you do it uh, with a passion like every day uh, you will see um, the changes really quickly yeah yeah that's good advice uh, another very common question you get asked is about getting a job in Japan. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very common question. You said almost uh, twice a day you get asked this on your your feed. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like the most common question. Like how how? <laughs> um, well, it, it's not like about how. I think like the first question you have to ask yourself: Do you really want to? work in japan because everything is so different like the culture the working culture is different the hours are different uh the salary would be different too if you feel like uh you can get like really high uh paid sal uh, salary like a job a high paid job like in japan it won't be uh 100 true because well you probably know <laughs> no matter how you try like the salary here is not that high <laughs> Yes, yeah, so. with the, the yen exchange rate at the moment. Uh, oh, if you want to send money abroad, it's not a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we had a, a comment from uh, Natasha. Thanks for joining on YouTube as well. Uh, she said she's never tried driving either. We are a rare breed, and I think <laughs> especially like you, Christina, you're living in Tokyo. Uh, on the webinar yesterday, we were talking about how great. Tokyo's public transport is a lot of cities in Japan, including Hiroshima. We have fabulous public transportation in the city as well. So I think Japan's a pretty easy country to visit and rely on public transport. What do you think? Yeah, that's true. Like, um, of course, like if you can drive, it might be like easier to go to like really, um, you know, for example, in Hokkaido, if you go to Hokkaido, like uh, it, it's it's huge, it's an enormous, and uh, there are not many like trains going uh, around, uh, or it's like really expensive. So it would be like much easier to travel by car. But if you travel in the central Japan, like if you travel around like Tokyo or Osaka or Kyoto, or even Nara, like there are a lot of buses uh, and uh, uh, trains. And uh, I'm actually like uh, traveling, uh, if, if I don't have any like, uh, meetings or uh, something that's like strictly um, um, like like um, that I have to go uh, on time I usually use my uh, bicycle or you can also rent a bicycle uh, there's like a Dokoma system you maybe heard about it it's uh, um, the bike that you can like rent for a couple of hours and uh, just put it back at any uh, spot you want so it's like really easy to travel around Japan even um, using bicycle which is like really eco-friendly yeah for sure and I love walking I think uh, j most places in Japan are very walkable so once you get there uh, usually you're around the heart of the city. It's not too hard to walk from side to side. It seems like you enjoy walking as well. You do a lot of hiking. I've I noticed. Do. Yeah. yeah, I do a lot of hiking, yeah. I recently went to one of the Nagao mount mountains. It is called Kurumayama, uh, which is <laughs> translated into English as a car mountain. <laughs> but uh, And I hiked about like uh, maybe... 25 kilometers per day uh per, per two days sorry two days um so yeah if you have like really comfy sneakers you can do whatever you want <laughs> yeah. and even even for travelers in japan they often say it's easier sometimes uh than figuring out the train system if it's a bit confusing they just walk yeah. so they're averaging like twenty thousand steps a day <laughs> It's very good exercise, but make sure you're ready to walk when you come yeah. to Japan, right? True. <laughs> you have to have like a nice sneakers, you know, to travel around. Yeah. Hey, I've had some guests who are great at walking around. They're wearing slippers, like oh. flip flops. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. <laughs> From Hawaii, people <laughs> have strong feet. Uh, I would never do that, though. <laughs> yeah. Very, very different culture, right? Some areas. Um, now, one of the places that I think you really love from your Instagram is Toyama. 
you seem to really love going to Toyama. Can you tell us about it? Uh, I usually go to Toyama during winter, but uh, I was thinking of going there like this autumn as well. Um, so, you know, like there's a lot of people going to Shirakawa Gore, uh, which is uh, a really famous um, uh, place in Gifu Prefecture. Uh, well, you can see it on uh, on the screen. And uh, um, while it's really beautiful, uh, um, actually, like in Toyama, you can find almost identical place, <laughs> um, which is like Gokayama, uh, uh, Gokayama uh, village. Uh, it's in Toyama, and uh, you need like a, probably like a thirty minutes dry, uh, bus drive from like Shirakawa Go to go there, but uh, it's uh, not very. Um, wide known so you won't find like a lot of tourists in the area which is like really cool because um i'm actually <laughs> really sensitive to sounds and uh, to the crowds so i prefer to go the places which is like hidden and less known um that's probably like the main reason why i have this blog on instagram <laughs> Yeah, I, I went to Shirakawago recently and uh, we didn't have a chance, unfortunately, to go to uh, Toyama to see that version. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as, as someone working in tourism, I try to go to the touristy places too because I want to see what strategies they're using to try to space out the crowds. And uh, so I took the back streets around some of the back streets and then it was more quiet. Um, so is it possible to enjoy this place even with so many people? Um, but yeah, it's much easier if you go somewhere where it's not so packed, right? That's true. That's true. Yes. Um, so <laughs> like I really hope that um, like tourism boards in Japan would uh, PR like more or less known spots, but they actually put like money on PRing like all the same spots, which is like a bit, uh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> it's, it's hard yeah. because you, you understand the, the push and pull, right? Because you have to show the hits, the top sites that everybody wants to come to Japan for, but there's also so many other things, you know, like, so you have to show a little bit of the top and then say, but, you know, not so far away is this one, you know. So it's kind of a juggling act, isn't it? And it's true. It's true. Yes. Uh, Natasha had a good question about <laughs> bicycle rentals. Is it affordable? I think so. Uh, the ones in Hiroshima City, I think it's 1,500 yen a day. So that's less than $10 a day to use the bike rental service. I think that's a really good rate. Um, I think in Tokyo it's like around like 2,000 maybe, but you can also like rent it for uh, an hour. There will be like 150 yen, which is like really, you know, it's even cheaper than uh, using a transport, like using Metro or JR, you know, <laughs> it's so easy. And if it's a nice day, you can be outside. And quite often, uh, even in the cities, they have nice lanes that you can use next to the river, which is a nice way to get around, right? Yes, <laughs> cycling in Japan, um, yeah, I think it's uh, also like in Nara Prefecture, there's like a lot of cycling roads. So if you're <laughs> cycling maniac uh, and actually like next uh, uh, next week, I'm going uh, for a business trip to Kagoshima and I would be like cycling around Kagoshima using uh, bicycles. So if you're into like cycling, uh, Japan can be like your destination. It's like so many different beautiful locations for cycling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, before we move on from Toyama, you've got this lovely train. You say the most scenic train line right next to the ocean, right? Yeah, this is uh, it's uh, close to Toyama Station. I think you need to take a train to go to see this train, <laughs> but it's worth it. Uh, I think it's like 30 minutes drive um, on the train, uh, I mean. Um, and it was like really beautiful. It's just by the ocean and um, I love winter, so I love cold weather. So I went, uh, I think on December uh, 27 or something, so just be before the new year. Uh, and it was uh, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, like on the picture, this contrast, uh, you know, like red uh, a train and this grayish um, ocean. It was like, wow, beautiful. So beautiful. And then you've also been to uh, Tohoku, uh, a little bit north of Tokyo. Now, a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to go to Tohoku from the Tokyo area, right? 
Yes, it's true. Like um, you can go a shinkansen is around like two, uh, three, like three hours, I would say, and um, it, it's um, you can also like use uh, passes, uh, not a jar pass, but like the hoko pass, which would be um, a bit less expensive. So I don't think that a lot of people know that uh, there are like a lot of jar passes, uh, which uh, kind of concentrate on different like. Um, as I said, like areas in Japan, for example, like the Hokujar Pass, that would be like uh, not that expensive. So you can uh, take this uh, Jar Pass for five days and travel all around uh, to Hoku. Um, I went this uh, spring to Akita and Iwate Prefecture and uh, uh, to, um, I think, uh, Aomori. Yeah, that was like really beautiful, and I would go again, uh, maybe in winter to see some snow. <laughs> yeah, I a few months ago I went to Fukushima as well, and of course Fukushima is in the news. Um, but that whole Tohoku coastline, that whole Tohoku area, is so beautiful and yeah. so easy. Even in Fukushima, it's such a big place. Yeah. Um, so there's, it's not only about the nuclear disaster. Definitely not. There's a lot to see all around that area. So, yeah, don't be shy. Go visit Tohoku. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand that Fukushima is actually like a really big prefecture. So, they have like a lot of places to visit. And uh, actually, like last uh, autumn, I went to the place where uh, the nuclear reaction happened um, in 2011. And um, it was okay, like, because I had like radiator and I was checking and it was like totally fine. Um, so um, I would definitely like advise, maybe not go to that place, but maybe go to some other places in Fukushima, which is closer to Tokyo. And it takes around like two hours from uh, central Tokyo. So it's also like really good um, advice for like two days trip, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed seeing a lot of the horse culture they used to have there yeah. and some of the museums and so much great fruit and vegetable. And like you said, uh, they're testing everything so you don't have to worry about safety. Uh, it might be safer than other parts of Japan because they are testing everything. <laughs> um, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Natasha said, look at that beautiful train. Trains are my obsession. Yeah, I love trains in Japan too. Uh, your photography is breathtaking. Thanks so much, Thank Natasha. Thank you. <laughs> now, one of the things, we were talking about cycling, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you always, when you go to Osaka, you always have a different view of Osaka than the typical neon light Osaka, right? Yes, um, I used to live in Kashiwara, Kashiwara city, which is uh, a city around like 30 minutes away from Namba station. So Namba station is like kind of like central station. It's like Tokyo. Well, well, it's not like it's like Osaka station would be like a Tokyo station in Tokyo. But it's also like really central station in Osaka and probably like a lot of tourists go there. But what they don't know is that you can take a train. It's 30 minutes to Kashiwara city. There are like a lot of nature. There's like a winery because it's one of the places where they produce like a lot of wine and yeah there's like Osaka wine in Kashiwara you can google Kashiwara wine it's actually like really good yeah and I usually do cycling around it just like, looks beautiful yeah gorgeous area <laughs> thank you <laughs> this is actually like the village um, uh, there's like a village in Osaka uh, the only village in the whole Osaka and you can also go there by bicycle yeah, oh, lovely. And Osaka, of course, is another city that most people fly into. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like we were talking about at the webinar yesterday. It's worth even if you go to Tokyo, don't rush out of Tokyo. Yes, it's a big city, but there are so many gems. And I say the same for Osaka area, right? Yeah, that's true. You just uh, have to, I don't know, spend some time in the Google or you can always visit my page. <laughs> and I hope you'll find some advices. <laughs> wow. Definitely. You've got so many great places around Japan. And uh, now one other area you seem to really like is in Shizuoka, Gotemba. 
Um, yeah, I went there like last, uh, I would say like October. Um, so um, a lot of people probably know that Gotemba is a city where you can find a really big shopping mall. So, you can, uh, but uh, I didn't go there for shopping. I actually go there for um, different like uh, experiences. So this is me uh, wearing a special cloth, uh, clothes for picking a tea leaves, which is like really uh, interesting experience. And I didn't know that uh, in Gotemba you can do this um, and um, we also rode uh, horses there's like a, um, a special place where you can like uh, ride a horse and uh, while looking at the Fuji mountain which is really beautiful um, and uh, yeah and uh, Gotemba is actually like really easy accessible from Tokyo I think um, it's just like only two hours you can take a uh, um, a bus um, I think it's like 3,000 yen or something so really really cheap um, and you can go for one day or again stay for a night which I would recommend doing I love I love the costume of course Shizuoka is famous for tea <laughs> Japanese green tea uh, they have fields and fields so whenever yeah. I take the train through Shizuoka I always admire Mount Fuji but I always also look at all the tea fields I'm like oh tea more tea I love that <laughs> <laughs> what a cute costume I love that so yeah. did you get a chance to pick the tea uh, yeah, but it wasn't the season though. <laughs> it wasn't the season, but uh, they showed us how to pick the leaves correctly and uh, what's the difference between different Japanese tea. Uh, what was like really interesting experience, and I also like got to wear this costume. So this is a traditional costume that we've been using in Japan since I don't know, like Edo period, probably something like uh, from 17th century or maybe uh, even earlier. Uh, but I was wearing it with my hoodie, so <laughs> it was kind of like weird. <laughs> but I really enjoyed. Okay, I love your honesty in your social media. You're like, please excuse my hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Louise Puppy has joined on YouTube. Great to see you, Louise. She often uh, comes over from New Zealand and enjoys travel around Japan with uh, nice. groups. That's fabulous. Yeah, green tea, right, Natasha? We love it. It's always a popular choice when people come but even around the world now we have japanese green tea to enjoy right yeah, uh, yeah. True, true. <laughs> uh, i think anywhere where they're picking tea they should wear the costume we we have a beautiful gardens in hiroshima city and mm -hmm. uh, they have tea there as well and i always hope that they would wear the costumes and let us mm -hmm. pick some because it's, it's such a nice part of the culture um, now let's talk about Shikoku. So you've been to Ia Valley in Tokushima and went over the scariest bridge yeah. in Japan, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I also went there like last December. It was my second probably time going to Tokushima. Um, I actually go there like again in the end of uh, December for uh, Avadori. So this is like a really uh, famous traditional uh, Japanese dance that was born in Tokushima Prefecture. So Tokushima has like a lot of things uh, to offer. Like as you see, like there are like a lot of temples. There's like a pilgrim um, road uh, that you can visit more than 100 uh, temples on your way. And of course, there are like uh, this uh, bridge uh, uh, which is made from the um, I forgot the name of the plant. What's the, the vine, isn't the it? Wine, yeah. like the wine. I've, yes. I've been over there as well. And then if you're staying in this area just above here, uh, where Alex Kerr has yes. remodeled some beautiful old guest houses, and then the other valley uh, just over is where Kamikatsu, the zero waste town, is. So yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of Tokushima, but Awa Odori. The awa dancing is so fun to watch. I love that too. Yeah, I would probably have a chance to learn how to dance myself <laughs> this time in the end of December. <laughs> so if you're following me, you'll probably that see me dancing really it. Fun. <laughs> I want to see you do it. <laughs> now on uh, Shikoku as well, you've been to Ehime. And this is the famous Ozu Castle, a uh, little Kyoto down below, and then Ozu Castle mm -hmm. uh, above. That's a, a lovely little place. I, I visited there last year as well. Yeah, like um, Ozu, I, I, I actually didn't know about this place. Uh, so I found it on the map. 
and I feel like, hmm, interesting. But when I was researching about it, I actually found out that there's like more than 50 cities around Japan that is called like Little Kyoto. Uh, there's like a special name for it in Japanese, like Kyoto, which is like uh, means uh, Little Kyoto. Also, cities uh, kind of looking like um, Kyoto. Uh, so, also was something really special for me, and I'll definitely go there again. And right now, uh, one of the companies, Japanese companies uh, that uh, own um, the Nipponia brand, so it's a, a hotel brand called Nipponia. So they're trying to revitalize the area to bring more tourists to renovate a lot of uh, old houses so people can uh, stay there and experience this uh, kind of old, slow Japanese life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's beautiful Nipponia buildings right next to the castle. And uh, Ozu Castle is one of the castles you can rent and stay in the castle as well, which is very yeah. unique, right? <laughs> I've never uh, tried it. I would love to do it, yes. <laughs> uh, now, you also went around Kagawa. You went to Shodoshima, Shodo Island. Yes. And uh, very popular for Ghibli fans, right? Yes, uh, I actually went there from Kobe. Uh, you know, Kobe is a city which is like really close to Osaka. It's around, uh, I guess, 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Osaka. So I go, uh, I went by ferry. So uh, it was about like maybe three hours ride on the ferry. And I went to this island. Shodachim was absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is a place where like olive trees are grown. So as you see on the picture, uh, this is an olive tree, which is like really rare for japan um yes <laughs> and i i see a lot of people uh, posing in front of that one on a broomstick with a little black cat because that's kiki's delivery service use that backdrop right true yeah i haven't tried it like you know jumping with a broomstick <laughs> it sounds like fun <laughs> yeah. now another place connected to miyazaki is in hiroshima that you seem to really love is tomonoura right my favorite place. Yeah, I love Tomonora. Uh, I've been there like three times and I would go again and again. So Tomonora is a really small port town um, that you can go, um, I think it would take maybe an hour and a half from Hiroshima station. So there's like a buses uh, going there. Ah, no not from uh, Hiroshima, maybe, um, sorry, I forgot, but I actually wrote an article about that um, for my site, so if you check it, you can find... Um, maybe you can get a bus from Fukuyama Station. Fukuyama Station, true, yeah, thank you. Um, yes, and it is famous that... Um, there is like a story about uh, Miyazaki-san. So Miyazaki uh, director, uh, he actually created a study of Ghibli and uh, he went there and uh, he was so um, mesmerized with the city uh, that he came up with the idea of filming, uh, not filming, <laughs> but creating um, a Ghibli world uh, that looks like this uh, city. So you can go there and uh, imagine that you're like a character of a Studio Ghibli film. You can actually also stay at the inn that was designed by uh, Miyazaki-san, so which is crazy, right? Uh, I saw that you had that on your Instagram feed. That was so cool to see. I'd never been up there. So, yeah, definitely somewhere I'm going to go next time. <laughs> and I was happy to see that uh, your fans voted Hiroshima over Nara when yeah. you asked the question. That was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people really want to go to Hiroshima right now. I think it's also influenced by, uh, you know, this film, Oberheimer, right? Uh, like it's an American film. So like a lot of people really want to go to Hiroshima. But what they don't know is that Hiroshima is really... Um, you know, um, vast prefecture. And uh, of course, like Hiroshima city is really beautiful. Uh, and I went there for a couple of times, but for example, yes, this is uh, Onomichi, one of my favorite cities in Hiroshima prefecture, um, which is really beautiful. It's a city on several hills and you can take um, uh, a ropeway, like up to the mountain to see, um, the beautiful um, sea and you know this landscape it was amazing 
And of course, going back to cycling, famous for the Shimana Mikaido cycling route, it's only seven, 70 kilometers. Um, so don't rush it. Take your time. There's lots of great places to see along the way. I always recommend people to stay over and uh, enjoy cycling, but also enjoy the town. It's so lovely. I love yeah. Onofiji. Uh, no, it's, it's such a cool vibe, like retro vibe. There are like a lot of small coffee shops around. So you just like call, like go sip a coffee here, there, uh, listen to some like jazz music. And uh, yeah, it's really uh, accessible from Osaka or, or Kyoto too. And, and of course, Hiroshima city. So uh, it's such a nice place to go. And not a lot of tourists go there. So I would definitely advise it to put it on your itinerary for your next Japan trip. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And uh, people uh, sometimes tell me, oh, don't talk about Onomichi. I want to keep it just for myself. <laughs> but come on, they can absorb more people. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we had a question from Natasha. She said, do you have a favorite vegan or vegetarian food or restaurant in Japan? Um, I would say like in Tokyo, there's like one place that I really like, which is like plant-based Tokyo this is like the name <laughs> so uh, it, it is in uh, Shibuya uh, not really far away from uh, Yoyogi station and uh, uh, when I want some you know healthy food I go there so it's a plant-based Tokyo which is like really easy to remember um, but actually like um, if you go like around Japan you would find like a lot of um, vegan and vegetarian restaurants it's it, it's not a lot, I would say, but uh, right now, I think like a lot of young people in Japan, they prefer to uh, not to eat meat. So um, there are like a lot of young owners of the new open uh, cafes, which serve some vegan or vegetarian um, cuisine, uh, especially in Tokyo. Like the, There are like a lot of places <clears throat> we can try it. Yeah, I think it's that's one of the challenges of going off the beaten track uh, in Japan is that uh, Tokyo is great, lots of choices. Osaka is not bad, lots of choices. Mm -hmm. But then you go to rural areas, it gets really hard. Uh, most most of the soups, even for noodles, are made with fish stock. Yeah. Um, so if you're willing to be flexible and, and accept fish stock, you can eat almost everything. But if you're a strict veg vegan vegetarian, it is sometimes really challenging in Japan. It's getting better, but it's it's still yeah. a bit hard, yeah. True, yeah. But you can always go to a convenience store, you know, to get some plant-based stuff. Uh, I see, like, a lot of tofu sticks, like, recently, which is look really cool when you don't have time to eat, you know, your lunch. <laughs> and rice balls. I'm yes. always grateful for rice balls in convenience stores as a, my staple. Mm -hmm. um, great to see you, Anne, on YouTube. It would be great that you could join as well. She says she loves Onomichi. Yeah, we're all Onomichi fans. I just wrote an article for All About Japan about Onomichi, a two-part article, and there's so many great young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs there doing interesting, sustainable businesses as well. So it's got the old classic traditional but also the new young vibe it's a really great combo isn't it yeah there are also like a lot of new uh hotels that you know been opened like the last year uh like a lot of options where you can stay for a night too yeah absolutely um yeah we had a a comment uh hiya girls oh great to see you again louise <laughs> and uh, natasha oh that's tricky it is it is tricky but as long as you know that it's going to be a bit difficult um, I think you can plan ahead, right? Uh, like anything. Yeah, uh, there's actually like uh, an app uh, that you can uh, download to see. Um, so you can go to a convenience store and uh, uh, scan the um, the code, you know, the street code on, on the side of the uh, like onigiri or something that you want to buy to see what, what what's inside because like uh, as you said uh, sometimes like Japanese put like meat in everything <laughs> so you have to uh, be you know um, uh, 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 like pay attention to what you eat if you're like really strict like vegan uh, for example but uh, it's not a hard still <laughs> it is yeah. it is getting easier and at least now people know what you're talking about uh when you say sorry i don't eat meat or fish and they're like oh vegan okay you know like th there's a there's an understanding of it now so it's it is a lot easier than it used to be 
Uh, I'm just showing a bit of your Instagram, uh, Suga Lennon, for anyone who doesn't know and who is on Instagram. There's so much information here. Uh, you really spend a lot of time making these beautiful reels. Um, how, how long do you spend on these? These are gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> it really depends if I have, um, you know, sometimes I'm so inspired by the place that I can make a new video uh, in maybe 10 minutes. Uh, but from time to time, um, <clears throat> I really want to post something, but I'm so like mentally drained <laughs> that uh, I can't do anything at all. So it really depends. But usually, yeah, from maybe 10 minutes to one hour, maybe one hour and a half <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, but it's it actually takes, it takes time to explore uh, to see like all the details about the place because i want to show people how easy uh, how accessible like you know the places are uh, so um i take time uh to do my research about the place which is probably more important than even making a video yeah do you have any hints for how to research good places to visit um, I usually uh, just Google, um, you know, I use a Google map. Uh, I'm such a fan of Google map. If you see my Google map, you'll be like in shock. I have so many places saved. Uh, I just usually Google it and, you know, try to see what's uh, around the place. So I, I don't think it's a really good advice. but No, but no. It's, it's probably the most used uh, access to reality and current information. Uh, there are some kind of bad reviews or company creative reviews, but usually it is very honest and reliable. So yeah, I use it a lot too. Uh, we had a question from Anne. Do you recommend for uh, how to book an economical longer term stay of one to three weeks? Are there better platforms than Airbnb? Great question. Yeah, so I know that there's like one pl platform that is called a monthly hotel, monthly hotel. So this is like a, a special site where you can find a lot of hotels uh, that want you to stay uh, longer, like for a week, for two weeks or three weeks. So they have a special like discounts. Um, but I'm not sure if it's in English. So I'm looking at it right now and it seems that they have only Japan, like, you know, a uh, page uh, that is entirely in Japanese. But uh, as uh, I said before, you can always use uh, uh, Google Translator. You can translate the whole page um, so you can understand what's going on. But yes, Monthly Hotel is the site that I would recommend you if you want to stay in Japan for um, a long period of time. Yeah. And another thing, uh, there's there's other options you could look into, uh, like temple stays. Sometimes if you stay a week at a temple, it's mm -hmm. very reasonable and it's a really amazing experience. Um, there's also camping in Japan. Uh, if you bring or rent or buy your own tent, uh, you can usually use campsites and it's quite reasonable. Um, there's a lot of good budget options um, staying around. Also, ask your friends because your <laughs> friends might have friends who live in Japan who might offer you a stay for free or, you know, uh, you could do an exchange. There's home exchange websites as well. Um, there's a lot of options. And Natasha is asking, do you travel on your own solo? Um, um, it, it depends if I travel on business or like uh, private. Uh, so if I travel... Um, uh, like you know if it, it's a private uh, a trip I would go solo or I travel with my husband um, and um, sometimes like uh, I take my friends because they're uh, asking me to take them <laughs> it's like hey <laughs> can you please organize a trip for me and I said like yeah well okay let's go somewhere <laughs> so I'm actually organizing a train for or a trip for um, Tokyo retreat there's like a place that uh, uh, I would take my friend for her birthday. It's in Yugawara, Yugawara Onsen. It's a, a Kanagawa prefecture, so it's a um, next uh, prefecture that's really close to uh, Tokyo. Um, it takes uh, around like one hour and a half to go there. Thanks for the reminder. I had um, queued a photo of Yugawara. It looks amazing. And this is Kanagawa prefecture, so really near Tokyo, right? About an hour away? <laughs> Yeah, like, um, I think like one hour and a half would do. Mm. 
Yeah, and the onsen looks so good. I love your reflection. <laughs> yeah, I love reflections. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, we'll have to let you go in a minute. Um, but it's been great chatting with you. And uh, I would recommend anybody who didn't catch it, uh, our Tokyo City and Nature webinar yesterday, you can still watch it. Uh, it's had uh, 600,000 views and 300,000 people have been watching it. It's really had an enormous response. So I think there's a lot of people looking for more sustainable slow travel around Japan, even in Tokyo. So I was so glad to meet you and get your insights there. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. And I would love would love to have a, a talk again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd love that. Well, you're traveling so much, so we could do a travel <laughs> update every six months or so. That'd be great. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Christina. Uh, I know I'm going to see you maybe in Hiroshima coming up your next trip, I hope. I'm excited, yeah, <laughs> about yeah. that. Fantastic. Thank you, so Thank you for your comments, everyone. Um, it's been like really fun to read what, what you're thinking about, yeah. I hope you will have a chance to go and, you know, explore a different side of Japan. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. It's more meaningful. It's more fun for you, but it also supports the local communities better too, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you so much, JJ. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. Happy travels, everyone. <laughs>